Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at y'all with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be a match between Idra and Lee Chae Young here on Tornado. This is a rematch between these two players, cast game number one back in December. And I waited six months to cast the next one, but uh, I was impressed by Lee here. In his match against Idra. I will not tell you who won, but if you want a link, let me know. I'll put it in the description. And let's go ahead and get right on into it. Here on Tornado, top side of the map, we have the blue Terran player, Idra. He is American. And yes, he played Terran in Brood War. A lot of people come here and they're like, it's Idra, the famous Zerg player who played StarCraft 2. Yes. Yes, indeed. But he played Terran back in Brood War, way before StarCraft 2 was a thing. Made his name out there as a very bad manner, pretty high level Terran player for a foreigner. Ooh, hovering around that SCV. And on the bottom left, I don't know who this is, but it's Lee Shea Young. He is good enough to handle a macro game from Idra, so he's got to be at least somewhere around that level. Uh, I don't know that Lee Shea Young is necessarily a Korean or not, but I don't know that it really matters. I mean, back in the day, foreigner versus uh, Korean was a much bigger split when it came to professional gaming. These days, with the region lock, which I really wasn't a fan of in StarCraft II when it was announced, basically, for those who don't know, the region lock meant that players in Korea who were living in Korea could not compete in larger worldwide professional tournaments, at least not ones that were part of the official WCS tournaments uh, tour. That was how you qualified, one of, the, one of the ways you could qualify for the BlizzCon championship every year. Um, and then they had their own tournament in uh, in Korea called GSL, where only people in Korea could compete. So we were segregated that way. And at first I was like, well, that's dumb. I'd rather have like the elite Koreans coming to all these events all around the world, all throughout the year. But uh, no, they weren't doing it. And then all of a sudden, Serral won BlizzCon. All of a sudden, a Finnish Zerg player, a random EU Zerg player, beat... All of those Koreans, including SOS, like an elite Protoss, beating Rogue. He's done so well against Koreans ever since. And since then, we've had several other foreigners rise up to be not necessarily his level, but uh, a young Italian player named Rainer took second place in BlizzCon last year. So, I mean, what we're looking at is, yeah, it actually did give a lot of these foreigners the confidence that they needed, that they could compete at the highest level, that they could make it to these later stages in these big tournaments. They weren't being crushed by Koreans early on. And just gave them more experience competing and they just kept working hard and working hard and there's more motivation to play because the koreans weren't going to smash you and take away your tournament money and they just got better and better and now uh, it's incredible it's really incredible to see how well the foreigners are doing in the scene so that was a long tangent for people who don't care about starcraft 2 but i'm just telling you how starcraft 2 handled the fact that the koreans were dominating and really no other nation was super involved at the highest levels of StarCraft 2, and they did something about it, and I think they fixed it. It's really kind of amazing, actually, how it's worked. So, anywho, here in Brood War, I, I don't believe there's any such thing. No such region lock, I believe. But still, got the KSL, got the ASL, got all these StarCraft leagues running around. And as far as I know, there is no Brood War foreign player who has ever reached the heights that Serral did by any stretch right right okay so looks like idra with the double racks opening with a little freaking out scv oh <coughs> he got in <coughs> he made it through just fine yeah it looks like idra's doing his favorite style against zerg which is going to be about a six racks play on two bases and he's going to try to basically make some science vessels obviously make some science vessels irradiate any mutalisks that show up irradiating lurkers Irradiating Ultras if they happen to arrive, and then maybe just trying to kill the Zerg player before Ultralisks show up and plagues start getting tossed down. But even then, this can totally work. Even if there are plagues, even if there's Dark Swarm happening, even if there's Ultras with good upgrades. We've seen Flash win games in this situation. We've seen Terror win games with this strategy. The last time I cast one of these games where the Terran went for the strategy and they lost, I was just flooded with comments of people saying, It's not viable. Why did the Terran player try to do this? Why didn't he just make tanks? It's like, look, yes, tanks are really good against Zerg. I'm not telling you not to make tanks. But it is totally viable in the hands of a decent, competent, to elite level Terran player to do this and beat a Zerg player who is also elite and competent and everything else. Okay? 
Okay, Hydro Disc Den done. Probably going to go for that Lurker Aspect. As soon as he has the resources, there it is. Evolving coming right up now. So two base Lurker opening. Which, by the way, that was scouted. So he's going to... Alright, if I can come in here before Lurkers are done, that'd be nice. So that's why this attack is coming in now, but up five minutes. Got Marines, got one Fire Bat. Doesn't have to worry about Mutalisks. So you'll notice there are no turrets coming up here because he doesn't need them. It's kind of nice. The Marines, um, no, 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 Chomping across the uh, field here with their machine guns. Burrow being researched by Lee here. Oh, on the backside, they get something. I don't know. I really want to get the fire bat, but geez, that fire bat. 16 damage splash is so much against these Zerglings. There are going to be two Sunkins here, which might actually be enough. It's not three Sunkins. No, oh, the fire bat gets picked off. That's huge. That's huge mungus that the Firebat got picked off there. All right. Ling's going for a bit of a counterattack the other way, but there are obviously reinforcements out this direction. I think maybe these are just to uh, uh, intercept reinforcements as they come across the map two by two. Ow, ow, ow. Zergling's getting picked off. One and two at a time here. The resources lost is definitely, definitely favoring Idra at this point in time. But, yeah. I mean, just... One factory coming in here is obviously... Going for the three racks now. Got the fire bats out. The lings are pretty scary. If he had a fire bat, this would go so much better for him. Medics are trying to heal it up, but it's not enough. Too many lings. Yeah, that one fire bat might have been enough to save everybody there. Or save a large number of the group. And Idra got to fall back. Got to fall back on defense a little bit here. More barracks coming up. Obviously working on the attack upgrades. Um, the factory with the machine shop. Hmm, I wonder what's, maybe it's for some vultures. Maybe he is getting some tanks. Maybe it's just not straight six racks bio here. That is a two base queen's nest out of Lee. What? You crazy person, Lee. What are you doing here to me today? Two base queen's nest. No third. Okay, third now at seven minutes, which is super duper late against a two basing Terran like this who did go for effectively a one rack expand. And there's your third. Amazing. SCV coming in for the scout. Gets <laughs> massacred by the two Sunkins. Trying to see how many Sunkins there were, I guess. I don't know what the other purpose of that scout was. He knows there's two Sunkins here. You're not getting through that. Like, he's not getting into the main by any stretch. I'm not sure what the plan was there for Idra at all. But uh, he's getting... Where is he getting the siege tank? All right, cool. So he is going to make some tanks here. We're going to go Marine, Tank, Fire Bat. Star, oh, I'd like to see a star port here, especially because, well, there's a hive on the way, and you're going to want to be irradiating defilers sooner rather than later, my friend. Ninamana. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Well, we'll see how this works out for Idra. He is making a star port. He's very cognizant that he needs science vessels here. He's a smart guy. Lurkers burrowing up. I guess maybe he's like, you know what, the lurkers, though... The Lurker tech, it makes more sense to go for some tanks with Siege Mode rather than against Mute Attack where Marines make more sense. So, all right. I like it. Siege Mode's done now, so you can Siege up this tank. I don't think you can hit anything from here. That range is pretty far, and you can't see it anyway because it's burrowed. Ah, oh, remember how burrow is done? So if an attack comes in here, you can burrow your drones and force the Terran to waste a scan trying to kill them. Appreciate that. I think that's pretty smart. Again, more players should get Burrow. Starport. Done. Control tower. Getting started. Post haste. And there it is. The Defiler Mound on the way back home in Zergville. All the Zergs down in Zergville like Defilers a lot. But the Idra up in Terran Town did not. I imagine somebody could probably write a pretty entertaining Dr. Seuss tale about this game. I have some pretty creative subscribers. If you write a creative Dr. Seuss tale about this game, you don't have to base it directly off the Grinch Who Stole Christmas necessarily, but you could. I will pin it. The best one, I will pin at the top of the comments here. How about that? Give you some creative writing assignments to do. And in case you were wondering, yes, I do read every comment anybody ever leaves on any of my videos at any point in time, no matter how old the video is or when it was made. If you've left a comment on my video at any point in my five-year career, I've read it. I promise I have read it. I am a, an obsessive reader. And reading YouTube comments totally counts for that. So, also, give me a like. 
while you're at it. The YouTube algorithm. You know how it is. You know how it be. So yeah, it turns out that uh, <laughs> tanks amazing against lurkers. They don't take bonus damage versus them. Scourge getting picked out. This is not good. This is a really big scary attack. Coming down Lee's way. Idric just keeps smashing lurkers. That one's gonna die. Watch. Yep. Good news for him is that tornado, the spawn locations that we're at here are very far away. He's got a little bit of time. Irradiate's coming in for Idra now. I'd really like to see him take a third base. I would. I would like to see him take a third base. We did cast a game of Idra's on this map, and I believe it was a ZVT, but it was not Lee. I checked. It was not this particular player. Yeah, the Lurkers, any tank fire you take is bad tank fire. And then pulling out before the spines can hit you. The control here for Idra is really good right now. That Overlord's going to die. Lurkers trying to jump up. Scourge Dark Swarm is up, which means run! <laughs> Pull back. Tanks going down to the spines there. That is, again, the great equalizer is the presence of Dark Swarm. And trying to fight against... All, okay, all the Lings died. Ooh, the Defiler might get sniped. Is he going to hide inside? Get the Defiler! I don't Okay. Ooh, this Defiler could die. Look at this Defiler! Never mind. He's totally dead. Is that a Nidus Canal at the front there? I don't know what that was. That Defiler needs to die before it can toss anything down. Oh, there's the Dark Swarm. And everybody runs for it. You can't hide in the Dark Swarm from Lurkers. That splash damage will get you every time. So these are 1-1 Marines with a bunch of medics. They're going to kill the Zerglings no problem, as they only have plus one ground carapace. The Hydras uh, have no attacks either. So no up, not, not, not great on the upgrades right now is Lee. Plague is coming in, though. High ground tanks. Oh, that lurker trying to mess with him. Did get three kills on that lurker somehow, some way. Still no third base. I'm worried about this for Idra. Although he does have a radiate, he does have science vessels heading down post haste. Lurkers just in <laughs> random spots. Look at these guys. They're gonna die. Like, the surround here by Idra is kind of godlike. That was really good. And then these guys escape. To meet up with these dudes and maybe they'll try to take down the third base. Seems like a decent, decent idea as there's only one lurker on the high ground, but you have two science vessels and you can radiate these guys no problem. So you radiate these two. Wait for them to die. Radiate that one. Wait for them to die. More lurkers, more defilers coming around from the south here. This is looking a little bit dicey for Indra. There's your dark swarm. See, everything was great until the defiler attacked. And then currently we're on full retreat here for the American. Ah, oh, plague! Ooh! <laughs> oh no! That was a beautiful or a disgusting plague, depending on who you're talking to about it. So that defiler is going to die. He knows it. It is an immediate death sentence. That tank is dead. Almost killed that lurker though. God, jumping on top of uh, plague marines is so scary. Nice hits on those science vessels though. And you're gonna ask, somebody's gonna ask in the comments, why don't the science vessels get repaired? I don't know, man. Not even flash repairs the science vessels when they get plagued. Just doesn't. We may have seen it once or twice. I can't remember who it was. I'm pretty sure it wasn't flash though. And they might have even lost. So third base timing at 13 minutes from Idra. Two base, billion marine march with two attack and one armor. The Zerglings have, again, one carapace. Not great upgrades here. We're going to try to get another Plague down here. Oh, oh, God. Okay, one science vessel goes down. The irradiated defiler really wants to cast a dark swarm. Does get a dark swarm up, and it does delay the attack. But these Lings do not stay in the dark swarm. Ah, you got to pull those guys back. You got to pull them back, friends. I'd really like to see Idra get some fire bats. And he is. He's making a fire bat in the production tab. Cool. Super cool. See, I told you this Lee guy is good. He's got good dark swarms, good plagues, knows to tech up. Got a fourth base running now, while Idra's third base is just now getting started running. So, yeah, this is going to be a good match. This is going to be a good match for your Tuesday. And I know a lot of you clicked on this, hoping to see some Idra rage. But let me tell you what happens with Idra replays as the drop comes into the main base. If Idra loses, he'll probably rage. If Idra wins, he probably won't rage. Oh, there's just fire bats. Not, this is so many Zerglings, though. This is a lot of fire bats, however. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. 
Oh, it was going so well until the plague and the dark swarm. <laughs> Everybody dies. <laughs> oh, good hit. Ooh, takes down a science vessel. Probably a previously plagued one, or maybe already been scourged one. God, the dark swarm placements have been super duper good. Lee. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, Idro just generally only BMs if he loses or if it feels like his opponent goes for a strategy which he disagrees with and feels is bullcrap. So I'm going to tell you, I have cast a few Idra games. There has been some rage in some, but the most of them, there has not been the rage. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. I mean, he's definitely one of oh, these poor medics. Just get left behind. That hurts, man. Also, Zergling's coming from the top side. Dude, Lee might win this game. Look at the supply. 119 to 113 total supply. Another fantastic plague. These medics are not getting home. They're just not getting home. I don't know what to tell you other than they are not getting home. Hang on. They might get rescued by Marines. And they're at... Oh, my gosh. They got rescued. All right. So maybe they're not going home. But also they didn't die in the middle of nowhere. Good for them. Good for them. So yeah, four basing Zerg player. Probably take a fifth here at this stage if you wanted to. Wouldn't be surprised. He is making an Ultralist Cavern, which is kind of the ultimate late game here for Zerg, as uh, Guardians are garbage. And I don't like them at all. And nobody does, because you rarely see them. That is a mass irradiate on... Look at these guys. Slowly, steadily lose their HP. And die. Scourge not happening, and... Bam! That was so many dead lurkers for energy! For energy! Already to get plagued in the face. He's jumping up here like he wants to get plagued in the face. Maybe he knows the energy was used on Dark Swarm, though. And in that case, don't have to worry about it as much. Hey, eh? This Overlord's allowed to kind of hang out. Which seems like a problem. He's just seeing everything that's coming out here. Well, kind of. Maybe not. He can't quite see what's coming out of that front door. Do -do -do, kindness plating on the way. It's time for kindness plating. Because if you don't have it, your ultras are not good. No run, science vessel. The jukes. Oh, the jukes and the target firing were sick. Idra, you dog. That was really good. Okay, so no fifth base. The Marines are like rats. Okay, these links cannot do much. Unless a Dark Swarm arrives. Are we going to be Dark Swarm? Okay, that is a lot of dead Zerglings. There's your Dark Swarm. It seems late. And a Plague Ooh, over everybody again. But they can still shoot. And they still do full power with their shootings. And they have plus three attack and plus two armor. And Science Vessels. Good hits. Good hits there. And Idra is forced back again. Another Plague. I'm not even sure that Plague was entirely necessary. Well, maybe it was. These guys are not already plagued, at the very least. Science Vessel, six of them. It's a good number, but he has definitely lost a couple and protected a bunch in his day. What a match. This is such a good match. I don't even... I don't know what to tell you guys. Okay, free Zerglings. Good and well donated to the cause of the Dominion, I guess. I don't know. Is this the UED? When you guys watch Terran, where do you think they're coming from if you've played the campaign? Do you think it's like the Confederacy? Do you think it... Well, the Confederacy is probably not the best option these days. For sure. Not that it really ever was. Do you think it's the UED? Do you think it's uh, the attempts to establish a dominion by Manx? Oh my gosh, that plague and a dead science vessel! No, tank count getting a little high here. Idra, maybe he feels like Mass Marine isn't going to do it for him with all the plagues that are around. Yeah, splash damage, killing them Zerglings. Oh, these poor guys. Ooh, nice irradiate, though. That was a really nice irradiate with the Hydra. Bam, one shot down. Yep, see? You're not invulnerable under there. Splash damage. It's a problem. Is nothing close enough to splash? 
Whatever, they're dead. 160 to 144 supply. Idra has the lead. Fifth base coming in down south here for Lee. Trying to take a fourth base on the left side here is Idra, but there are Zergling trying to stop that from happening. Hydra was going after science vessels, I think. 3 2 on those lings. The upgrades, suddenly pretty good for Lee here. He's making eight Ultralisks. Okay. Ah, eight Ultras at once is pretty, pretty good. The tanks are getting jumped on by the Zerglings. That is not good at all. T still. Five tanks remaining. They don't have the greatest of upgrades. If these were like plus three tanks, I'd feel worse about this for Lee. But they're not. And free science vessels for the taking. Ow, ow. Oh, the Ultra's coming from the right side. Surprise! Flank attack. But enough tanks and Marines there. That's not going to happen. Can't land your command center there because there is, well, Zerglings in the way. So these guys are going to kill those. Ultra's coming from the south side. Jeez. Bruh. Ultra's taking tank firelings, jumping on top of everything. Tanks exploding left and right here. Are there enough tanks to handle it? You can't run from this army. The Irradiate on the Ultralisks do help kill them faster. They are dead, but the secondary reinforcements coming in. More Irradiated Ultralisks. The tanks are gone at this point, and the Medivacs are probably dead too. What a match. This has been super good. I think this might get an epic tag. We're only 20 minutes into this thing. Good golly, Miss Molly. I know you guys think I use the epic tag too much, but let me tell you. I do try to cast the longer macro games, and those, by definition, are usually more epic than the ones that are like four minutes. So I suppose you're right. I suppose maybe I do use it too much, but there's a reason for that. They're good. These are good matches. It's 145 to 133 supply. Idra has a lead. He's going to establish his fourth base, which is really important, considering fifth base for Lee is here. And he's got a sixth base on the left side, too, just for the kicks and giggles. Now, these Ultras are fast. I'm assuming Anabolic Synthesis is done. It certainly is. He's keeping up with these Speedlings. Got uh, six armor and two attack. Working on plus three attack here. And uh, this is not, not going to be great for these Marines. Ah! <laughs> Three shotting, even with the healing from the medic. This Ultra Lisk is really hard to kill. The Marines are doing nine damage per shot, but six of that is being removed by the armor. So it's three damage per shot from those ult from those Marines. Yes, they hit hard. And yes, they hit fast. And fast is kind of their saving grace there a little bit. Sixth base, several drones getting massacred. Going to try to take down the extractor to slow down further ultralisk production. Attack coming down this way. Tanks are set up. And this is looking pretty intimidating. This is a big, big bio ball. Extractor does die. Zergling trying to handle this thing. Which they, I would argue, cannot do necessarily. Oh, more linkers showing up, though. Dark Swarm down to the south. Ultra off at a corner by himself there. He's done something bad and is thinking about what he's done. And Idra doesn't even try to kill him. Oh, maybe you can't see that. That's funny. <laughs> Main base. This base is still not happening. Uh, natural base of Lee is in a large amount of trouble. And suddenly that hatch is going to die. Great. And your Hydro skin might die. And all your Ultras are getting irradiated before they do anything. They're hurting each other with the irradiations. There's a lot of tanks. I mean, there's not a lot of tanks. Never mind. There are fewer tanks now than there were before. But pulling back, consolidating his forces, not getting jumped on from behind as much. 3-3 three, three Marines, man. The Ultras aren't even doing anything. This Overlord's irradiated, too, for reasons. I guess there was some energy available on the nine science vessels that we're rolling with here. Irradiate's going down on the Lurker on the high ground. Irradiate catching the Defiler. Ahem. Irradiate catching the Defiler, though. Or we'll just stand here and get plagued in the face. Does that actually... Does getting plagued make units respawn like they've been hit and they run away? Oh, boy. Fifth base in trouble here, too. This might just be the stranglehold that Iduro is looking for. It is 138 to 136 supply, but being even at this stage of the game is not great for Lee. The Ultra Lists are hold positioning. They don't want to go down there because there's tank fire, but also standing here getting shot in the face, not great either. Jumping on top of everything. Friendly fire splash damage is going down. But there are still enough Marines remaining to cause problems. He does save the fifth base with an Ultralisk Zergling response. The Ultralisk dies. 
using the eraser maneuver here, pioneered by Boxer. Macro hatch number one in the main base down. Drones, if there was a Nidus, they would have gone in it. Another plague. Ooh, that was a great plague. Dude, Lee is trying to hold on here. Dark Swarm comes up. Unfortunately, there's nobody in the Dark Swarm. It kind of protects these drones a little bit. The drones are attacking and fighting, by the way. Uh, losing the Defiler round. Bad. Really, really bad all of a sudden. Muta in production. Ling's in production. Replacing his Defiler round elsewhere. He's got another race on the right side. But losing all of his tech seems really super problematic. Why are the Scourge flying? Where are you going, Scourge? Take down these science fat. No, bad control. Bad control from Lee. I imagine he was elsewhere. <sighs> All right, man. That's a lot of Ultralisks coming in to right try to reclaim the main base. I might even just, like, oh, is he hold positioning? He's moving the medics. Oh. Oh, the medics make it so the Ultras can't get up without attacking the medics directly because the pathing is dumb. Does he have another Ultralisk cavern? Yes, he does. I mean... Losing your main is problematic. I'm not going to say it's not. This is me saying losing your main base is not a problem. Because look at all the bases. Look at all of the income he has. He still has 47 drones. Andrew has not been able to take a fourth base yet. Lurkers waiting for you at the bottom of this ramp. Hey, you want to get out of here? You pay the price of irradiating everything down here first. Buying some time. Look at him, try to expand this way. No, says Lee. All I have up here is a hatchery. <laughs> oh, Butalisk! Butalisk rampage on the irradiated science vessels! Oh, no, 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 go get it. You're dead anyway. Try to jump on something and kill it. Okay, well, he waited his time to do that. This is good. Dude, Lee might lose his entire main base and all of his tech structures and win the game anyway at this stage. I just, for someone who's lost his main and his natural base, he is in a surprisingly good position. This is dumb. This is dumb how good a position he's in. Morling Ultra. Another Mutalisk. Oh, the science vessel count. Getting obliterated. And suddenly, Idra is in the movie 300. And he's trying to hold... I don't know why he's even bothering, honestly. I guess he can't get out. Right? He's not getting out. Uh, this right side base is... Pro I mean, the responding Zerglings, though gonna say it's probably gonna die no zerglings will save it they have fast run speeds they can get here in time and wreck your four marines <laughs> and that's it i think idra just tapped out i think he just left the game no gg no nothing lee is your winner there in 27 minutes and 43 seconds he's like i'll drop this side no says the ultralisk with 10 kills I'll expand over here. No. I'll expand over here. No. That was it. He was mined out of his main. He was mined out of his natural a long time ago. He has one base worth of income, and it's one, two, three, four, and five bases of income right now for Lee. It's a premature leave. If you want to count this as Idra range or Idra rage, I would not. <laughs> Oh, uh, I would not blame you if you if you would uh, think this is rage because uh, that was a rage quit uh, from Idra. Okay, so wow, Lee, I knew I was impressed by you. I need to look for more games from this dude. That was great, great dark swarm play, great plagues, great killing science vessels. Great upgrades on his Ultralisks here. Fully upgraded. That was it. I mean, I don't, I don't even I don't even know how Idra had 100 supply, to be honest. Like, this dropship, I guess, counts. All of his SCVs count, obviously. He's got a small group up here that can't handle the existing army. Can't handle that many Ultras. There's no way. There is no way you're handling that many Ultralisks. And I guess additional science vessels appear for base defense if necessary, but... Bropped. Abrupt, abrupt rage quit. They're out of Idra. And I know it's an Idra game because it's part of an Idra replay pack, which means he played it. Because if this was from Lee's perspective, then we probably would have seen a Idra has left the game, and then we would have seen a Lee leaves the game. But no. Idra just out. Just done. There are no observers either. So 
Hot dang. I mean, that's getting an epic tag. That was fantastic. That was super fun. End of the day, 206,000 points for Lee, 191,000 points for Idra. 883 Zerg units produced, 700 lost. Only killed 300, but 300 of the existing 600 of Idra. Pretty good stuff. How does that number make any sense at all? So Idra lost 315. Oh, of the 400. I guess I'm reading it wrong. Cool. Structures raised. Lee killed no Terran structures today and won the match, which is a very Zerg thing to do. And look at this. Just the number of bases. He mines 7,000 more gas. He mines 10, 13, 6, 14,000. Maths are hard. 14,000 more minerals. And then like 22,000 more spent. 22,000 more resources spent. Yes? Yes, that's what it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and an epic replay from Idra. Go ahead, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.